In this video, I'd like to just build on to, I think it was part five, where we looked at uh, users and permissions. There we looked at um, how permissions are assigned to users, um, and in fact, how those permissions roll through to the particular documents. All right, now, one question that's still or two questions, I suppose, that still needs answering is if you want to create a new user or a new role. So let's just quickly, maybe just in half a minute, do a bit of recapping for a particular user. You've got a certain role allocation, and each of these roles gives that user permission to read, write, create certain documents. Uh, and of course, hereby, allow modules, it actually shows or hides particular modules on this page, right? Just keep in mind that if you hide accounting, you certainly can't click on any of these documents. But, um, I've, I'm not going to show it now, but um, I've actually proved it that even if the accounting is not visible, if you search for chart of accounts, it gives you the chart of accounts similar to when you would click on accounting and go to chart of accounts. So this uh, setting where you either allow or disallow certain modules certainly is not a security thing. In other words, if I hide some um, the accounts from the module from this user, he won't be able to access those docs. He will if he if he knows how to. So and that's really restricted on a role basis, which actually looks at the document permissions. Now, of course, it, it depends on your situation. If you're a two or three person company where there's trust involved, and you, it really doesn't matter who can access which docs, then this type of setting would typically be for convenience sake, you know, which mod, where am I now? Uh, oh yeah, uh, which modules is visible? It's from a convenience point of view, it's not security. Um, so you can just hide the, the modules that that person is not using, um, but certainly if he searches for the correct document that he wants, he can access anything. But once you're in a bigger organization, you really need to be a bit more um, selective in terms of who can see what, you'll use this to make sure that only the right people can access, access the right documents. All right, so that was basically what we looked at the previous video. Now we say, okay, well, I want to now add a new user. All right, the first entry is your email account. I'm actually going to add a non-existing email I've got a J and K, but it's already assigned. If I double assign it, the system's going to complain. And of course, let's use the generic name Joe um, Soap. Um, let's edit that in full page. You can add the username Joe <coughs> because I've enabled on the system that you can log in by a username. It's settable whether you can use username or email or just email. All right, let's not send a welcome email because otherwise it's going to bounce. You'll notice that the permissions aren't there yet. All right, we just first create the basics and then we say yes, well save. And then of course, if we go back, you'll see Joe Soap is there now. All right, now of course we can do role assignment and of course decide to hide or unhide the particular modules like I've just explained a minute ago. All right, so there you've got your new um, user created. Now, of course, the other thing that we looked at were, were roles, um, and that's, of course, you assign a certain role to a user. Typically, in a big company, you will have single roles. He's either the manager or a um, assistant or something, but not both. In a smaller company, you'll have multiple roles assigned to one person. You know, you've got to wear more than one cap. 
Now, all of these roles, except those, I played around with those. Those are my additions as, as I was playing around. But generally, all these roles are default in ERP Next. Um, and they're pretty extensive. You know, there's only 20 listed. If you list all of them, there's quite a few. In fact, there's um, 63 of them. All right. But now, should you find that the particular role you would like to assign to somebody, a title if you want to, doesn't exist, you can simply say new, and I want to now create something like a production supervisor. There's a production manager, but there's no production supervisor. All right. Very important tick here is this. On ERP Next, you've got two types of users, a system user and a website user. Okay, The system user are the ones that accesses the um, modules from the, f from the first page. You know, the accounts, the manufacturing, the buying, etc. Um, that's a system user. In other words, your accounts department, your production manager, your um, s stock manager that wants to access this the system and set documents and stock entry and purchases and what have you. The other type of user is a website user, i.e. a customer or a supplier. Now you select select this tick if it's a system type of user and you unselect it if it's a website type of user. All right. Now this is going to be a system user, so we keep that ticked and we click Save. So now you've got that role defined. Now we want to set permissions, and I'll you actually do it there. If I click it now, it's not going to come up. Um, I did find that you actually have to log out. I'll have to investigate this a little bit further. Um, so we just log out quickly, log in. <clears throat> what I do suspect is, let me just type in my password, concentrate on doing that, Ooh, I did get it wrong, sorry about that, there we go, um, I do suspect that um, if you log out, you leave it overnight, um, at midnight there's a whole bunch of cron jobs that runs, then that will be made available. So I suspect um, it's a, it's something that you set and the permissions is done later. All right, nonetheless, here we've got the role. We've created that and now we need to set the permissions. What permissions? It's the perm uh, It allows this role, the persons to which this role is assigned to, to actually access or not be able to access. You see that comes up. Now, if we'd done it straight away, we would not have been able to select production supervisor here. Uh, we need to now set which documents this person can actually access. Now, let's say we can, it's a production manager, so it's something to do with stock, perhaps, or production plan, yeah, or rather production plan pro production plan. All right, so we add that, and he can write it, he can create it, he can cancel it, he can submit it, he can delete it, he can amend it. Yeah, let's say that's it. All right, what other doc? We add another document, um, something to do with stock perhaps. Uh, I'm just doing this very lightheartedly, but obviously stock ledger entry. Right, you add that. Okay, you can read, print, and let's say e email that. And so you can select all the documents, run through them, and define what this user may or may not do. Um, all right, so that's now into our role. Um, Add it as a role, so we go back to our user, and we select a user. You'll now see under here there's a production supervisor which we can add. 
Right, so now that's that's another role that we can assign to certain people. Right, that's it for creating a new user and a and a role. I hope you found that help helpful.